again, welcome to Stavely Salvation Army. The theme for today is the best is yet to come. Isn't that wonderful? Fabulous thought. And the Bible reading, the verse, the key verse, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And we're going to sing song 378 in our Salvation Army songbook, What a Faithful God Have I. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity on this August day to come into your house, to enjoy fellowship one with another, but to know that you are here. And we pray that as we share together through this YouTube ministry, that you will speak to us, helping us through whatever the week has been. You know when people have been poorly. You know when people feel depressed. You know when there's been celebrations. And this morning, 
We pray that you will help us understand your scriptures and to know that the best is yet to come. Come, Lord Jesus, and speak to us through this opportunity of ministry. Be with those people who are listening, watching. And may your Holy Spirit just go to all who need you in a very special way. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first Bible reading is from Hebrews and Hebrews chapter 4. You may think, well, why Hebrews? Well, it's one of those books that can speak to us. To, we want to discover how Jesus Christ fulfilled God's promises to the Hebrews. We learn about the sacrifice and we are challenged to stay strong. And so Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 says this. Since we have a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, who has gone into heaven, let us hold on to the faith we have. For our High Priest is able to understand our weaknesses. When he lived on earth, he was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. Let us then, feel very sure that we can come before God's throne where there is grace. There we can receive mercy and grace to help us when we need it. I'd like the, uh, the songsters to... Uh, Sing, I've been changed. I'm newborn now. My life has been rearranged. What a difference. And on YouTube, there is Workshop Songsters singing with Sheffield Citadel Songsters. I've been changed. And they're going to give their testimony. God willing, these, this section will be able to come and be found for us. <laughs>
between a Christian and a non-Christian. Have you ever been asked, are you a Christian? I was sat in the marketplace at Staveley and a gentleman came and said, I'm an atheist. Okay, but I've got real problems. Will you pray for me? There's a challenge there. If he's an atheist, the big if, he wouldn't have wanted me to pray for him, would he? But I prayed for him. And I firmly believe he's not an atheist. He's on the verge of being a Christian. So pray with me for him and his family. We're going to sing Psalm 383, Meekness and Majesty. Now I've been told that some of my meetings are a little bit old-fashioned, a little bit too traditional. So I've tried to include a little bit newer songs in today's meeting. So perhaps Meekness and Majesty from 1993 is a little bit newer than some of the songs used. Enjoy and be blessed. and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility, and washes our feet.
Bible reading is from Hebrews again and chapter 5 verses 1 to 11 and I'm reading from the youth Bible every high priest is chosen from among you the other people he's given the work of going before God for us to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. Since he himself is weak, he's one of us, he is able to be gentle. Gentle with those of us that don't really understand and who are doing things not quite right. And because he is weak, the high priest must offer sacrifice for his sin as well as our sin. To be a high priest is an honour, but no one chooses himself for this work. And then God said to Jesus, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And to another scripture, God says, you are a priest forever. And while Jesus lived on the earth, he prayed to God and asked for help. He prayed with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And his prayer was heard because he trusted God. Even though Jesus was the Son of God, he learned obedience. He was able to give eternal salvation to all who obey him. In this way, God made him a high priest. Quite challenging words. Some weeks ago we were on a journey. Together, you and me. And we're still on that journey. And so... Through the message of the band, I hope and pray that you will be encouraged to ponder where you are. And still I say, the best is yet to come. Isn't it exciting? Let's listen to the message from the band. Thank you.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we approach your word, your message, feed us. Feed us by the power of your Holy Spirit that we will have understanding. That the best is yet to come through you. Lord, we live in a sin-sick world. We live in a difficult world. But it can be better and will be better. For you have said the best is yet to come. And you want us to be successful. You want us to tell others of your love for them. So just now, as we look into your scriptures, may we know and hear quite clearly that the best is yet to come. I ask this in Jesus' name, in the power of Jesus, I ask this. Amen. So, Acts chapter 20 is when Paul, the apostle, is speaking to the elders in Ephesus. Ties in with what we've been reading in Hebrews and Ephesians. It was Paul's farewell address where he highlights to the church in Ephesus, keep watch. Keep watch. Be alert. So today I tell you that if any of you should be lost, I, Paul, am not responsible because I've told you everything. God wants you to know that he is with you. Be careful for yourselves and for all the people the Holy Spirit has given you to care for. You must be like shepherds to the church, which he brought with and bought with his death of his own son. Have you got that? Be careful. Be careful for all those that God has given to you and to me. We're all ministers. In verse 32 of that same chapter, now I'm putting you in the care of God and the message about his grace. It is able to give you strength and it will give you the blessing God has for all his people. And Paul says, when I was with you, I never wanted anyone's money or fine clothes. You know, I was always working to take care of the flock. I can relate to that. I have 32 sheep of various types and I love my sheep, I love my flock and then I have over 32 people to look after. They are the flock here based in Staveley, God's church. God's people. Now, I try to give out unconditional love to everyone, just as God does. 
to us. There are times when it's challenging. But as many of you know, my husband has a little sports car, a little blue sports car. And my son has a silver sports car. And I find it easier to drive the silver than I do the blue. And I don't know why. But it's fun being challenged. I'm riding the silver because I know I can do it. Not so sure about the blue. Never thought psychologically that it's the colour that's getting to me. Mm. I'm only a person. But God's telling me that I've got to have some fun. And I've got to be a passenger every now and again. And those of you know that I don't like being a passenger. But I've given my life to Jesus. And he is helping me to be a passenger. He's guiding me to be a leader. But we are, and I, belong to God. Did you ever do the Alpha course? Did you read that little book? that brought highlight who is Jesus, who is God. And then we had a meal together and the Holy Spirit came. Do you belong to God? Were you bought by the blood of Jesus? Have you given your life to Jesus? Jesus said, I will always be with you. So, we are guided and we're directed by God. And in this difficult time of people moaning about not having enough money, big bills supposedly, grasp hold of this scripture that the best is yet to come with our relationship with God. You are God's people. So for this re reason, excuse me, there is hope. There's something to look forward to in the future. We are people that have an opportunity to give out the gospel. But what happens in the future is up to you and it's up to me. Oh, but I work hard. Oh, and it's such a lot. And I do this and I do that. And I'm always down at the army. There are people on the periphery of church. I ask you not to be on the periphery as a consumer, but come to church and be a contributor, be part of the team, be raised up to do what God wants of you, raised up for such a time as this. Be blessed in your giving, more blessed in your giving, because guess what scripture said, more blessed is to give than receive. Quite a challenge. So what's God's purpose? Acts 20. And verse 24 says, I, 
don't care about my own life, says Paul. The most important thing is that I complete my mission, the work that the Lord Jesus gave me, to tell people the good news about God's grace. Have you looked at your mission development plans, Salvation Army? What is your mission? Is it that? The most important thing is that I complete my mission. The work that the Lord Jesus gave me. And what is it? Even now, in 2022, as part of our mission development plan to tell people the good news about God's grace. So we have a purpose. A purpose in our life. We have a unique calling. Things do change. Things have changed. But we embrace that change. The changes are here to stay. Can I ask a question? When did you encounter Jesus? Where did you meet Jesus? You know the answers. I don't. But is your relationship with Jesus still ongoing? Is it growing? How's your Bible study going? We've thought about Alpha. Did you develop from that meal that we shared together? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Have you been freed from your sin? Have you a place of refuge? Friends, people are still getting changed by Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit. That things are developing and the best is yet to come for our Salvation Army, for our East Midlands Division, for the cause, for our churches. The best is yet to come. Let the Lord speak to you as he has done me. As we sing the old, old song, 877 come home come home and I just ask will you come home to Jesus the choice is yours
When Paul preached this message in Acts 20, he was challenging the people of Ephesus. Just now, he's challenging the people in this East Midlands division. He's challenging people that go to church He's challenging those that don't. He's challenging you and I that are listening to this YouTube presentation. Listen to what God is saying and react in the way you know you should do. To bring everything together, we're going to Give out another testimony. Song 877, I'm a child of a king. child of a king and it's my prayer that you will know what it's like to be 
a child of a king. And if you don't, then get in contact with perhaps your own church or the local Salvation Army officer. Or come to Staveley, come to Clown, come to Worksop and talk and find out what it's all about. For the best is yet to come. Amen.